All right, so in this project, we're going to do a somewhat end-to-end -end flow of uh, using Git. Basically, we're going to start from cloning a repository, make changes, commit the repository, create a pull request or a merge request, and just merge our code. That's normally the flow you do. You get somebody's code, you make a change to it, and you basically apply your changes, right? And we're going to use several uh, keywords or several commands, git commands to do this and everything is going to be a CLI because I've explained why before because learning how to do the CLI is, is universal. You can use it anywhere as opposed to using a UI. Okay. So a lot of times you start with a repository that exists. You would clone it, right? In this case, I cannot provide you a, a repository that exists that you can actually make changes to. So you're going to have to create your own. So we're going to create a new repository and we're going to assume, we're going to pretend like it existed before. Okay. So I'm going to go to my GitHub account. I have a bunch of repositories. If you go to my GitHub account, SparseQA1, you're going to see whatever I have public at that time. Right now I only have very few, uh, five public. So I'm going to click on create a new repository and you guys follow me. Do this as I'm doing it. You do it in your own account. First log in to your GitHub. The only thing you need is to be logged in to your GitHub account. So it's going to say, give me, uh, it's going to ask me for a repository name. I'm going to say git course example one. All right. No spaces. Don't put any spaces. This, so it's going to be part of the URL. Just put dash or underscore. In this case, I just put uh, dashes. Uh, git course example one. That's the name of the project. Then you can give it a description. I'm just going to leave that blank. Uh, let's make it public. I'm going to make it public. You can do it private if you like. Then later on, there are a few changes. You're going to have to use passwords and everything else. We're going to talk about that. So I'm going to add a readme. I'm going to quickly show you what happens when you don't add a readme. I'm going to add a readme, which will create a readme file in the repository already. And I'm going to leave everything as is. So I'm going to say create a repository. All right. So I have a repository right here with a readme in there. So I just want, and it just shows me, and I have a main branch. I will, I will talk about branches in a little bit. So let's actually create another one just to show you what happens if I don't select that. So I'm going to go to repositories. I'm going to click create new one. I'm going to say git course example two instead of one. I'll just do two. I'm also going to make it public and I'm not going to select the readme. Okay. Then I'm going to click on create a repository. In this case, the UI is totally different than what we saw earlier. Now it actually have information about how to, how I can add more code to it, like how I can convert a local repository into a remote. Basically, I can connect the two. We're not going to do this. We're going to do this in an, another flow right now. This particular example, this particular flow is for an existing repository. So let's assume this is our existing repository and we, we're going to clone it and make a change to it. That's the whole process. Okay. So the first word, the first command we're going to do is clone, git clone. Okay. So what you need to do is you actually need to go into your local and you have to decide when you do a git clone, you're basically downloading the repository. So by now you probably already done a download. So you can go to code right here and you click on download zip. That's just downloading. it. You're not going to track it with, with Git and stuff. That's not, that's not why you're here. You're here to learn Git. So we're not going to download it. We're going to clone it in the state. Okay. So we're going to come here and we're going to find a folder where we want to clone it. So you can, you don't, you cannot use a UI. I just want to show you, I have a folder that's empty, but I have to go to this folder using the CLI because it's a Git command is a, a CLI. So I'm going to open my terminal. I like to use iTerm, but use any terminal you want. If you're on Windows, you can use PowerShell. You can use WSL, which is uh, Linux on Windows. Uh, you can use Git bash. That's kind of what I recommend using Git bash because everything is there and you can use all the commands whatever uh, CMD you're comfortable with or, or a terminal you're comfortable with on Windows, use it on a Mac terminal or iTerm. I, I really enjoy iTerm. So I'm going to go to that folder where I want to clone the repository. So when you're cloning it, you're downloading it, right? And when you download, you want to put it somewhere. Normally in a browser, when you click on download, it, by default, it downloads into the downloads folder, right? Uh, so that's pretty much what we're doing. But instead of downloading it into a downloads folder, we want to download it to a specific location. So I'm going to go to the project I want. So I'm going to go to CD projects, uh, courses, get, this is just my local, uh, just the way I have my, yours is going to be different. It's just a folder on my local machine. If I do a less, it's empty. I'm going to clear it. So I'm going to do git 
clone, right? What am I cloning? I need to give it the address of the Git repository that I'm going to clone. So this is the first keyword we're going to learn, the clone. So when you come to your repository here, you click on download and there is information about the cloning. So there is SSH and HTTPS. So I'm going to show you HTTPS because that's the easiest. Basically, you have to use a password to be able to uh, push and, uh, and when you pull it, it's fine because it's public, it will just pull it without a password. But when you push it, you need a password. Um, basically, you use a token. They don't even use a password. We talked about it, right? We created it in the previous video. We created a token, and this is when we're going to need it. So SSH is a whole different topic. I'll add a video about SSH. You basically have to authenticate. You have to create a relationship between the computer and your account. That's a whole different topic, but we are going to cover it. So I'm going to copy this HTTPS link okay whatever company you're you're uh, working for whatever you're going to need to clone a repository you're always going to have these two options and uh, choose whichever one if you already have a ssh set up you're going to do ssh because that's the easiest you don't need a password or anything https you will need a password so i'm going to copy that so it's going to be git clone and just the address and hit enter all this is doing it is downloading it downloading it if i do ls it cloned it. We have a folder here called git course example one. That's exactly the name of the folder. So I'm going to go into it. CD git course example one. If I do a list, there's barely anything except the readme MD, which is a readme file that is already in the, in the remote, right? This repository. So what we did is we literally created a copy of this whole thing on our local machine. This is a remote. Okay, this is a remote address of the repository and we downloaded it, aka cloned it, aka we made a copy of it on our machine and then they all synced up. Whatever changes we make here, you will be able to know, it will be able to keep track of what has been changed. So we did git clone, that's the keyword, we cloned it. When somebody comes to you and say, hey, clone this repository, it just means download it and we just did that, okay? And uh, now when we're in that folder, another another command we're going to see is git branch. This is another user says your second command git branch will show you what branch you're on right now you're on a main branch you are on the main branch that's the only branch that's listed here so with git branch there are several things you can do you can create a branch right here locally and push it but i'm going again i'm going to do everything the easy way the way i learn like just go from the basics so it's easier to create it out there and pull it i feel like it's easier to understand so here you see where the branch the branch is branches are the way I'm going to just explain them in in a in a layman term is they kind of like a copy of the code. They're not they're not copies, right? They're pointers. They point to the code what the code look like at a certain time. If I create a branch right now, it's basically going to point to hey what the code looked like at that time. Okay, that's just to get deep into it. Just for us, just think of it as you're creating a copy of the code, all the code right now we are on the main branch. So we're going to create a new branch. I'm going to click on view branches here, or I can click on here and I'm going to click on new branch and I'm going to give it a name. You can give it any name. Usually in a company, you have like a Jira ticket, a Jira issue associated with it. So you, the branch name, you put the Jira number on it. In this case, I'm going to say my first branch, just give it a name. What are you going to get it from? Are you going to branch from main? Since we only have one branch, that's the only choice we have. So when you're creating a copy of your code, you're going to copy from somewhere, right? So you might have a bunch of branches. Which branch are you copying from? So in this case, I'm going to copy whatever is code in main. Main is a clean code, the main code, okay? Sometimes the company might be using master instead of main. Uh, so master, main, they mean the same thing. It's just a preference. In this case, by default, GitHub created main for us. It created a main branch for us. So we're going to create a copy of main and we're going to call it my first branch. Again, some people that actually know Git are going to be mad at me for saying copy of it because not technically, but that's the only, that's the best way to understand it. So don't be mad. So you're just creating a copy of the main branch. So we're creating a new branch, the right terminology, create a new branch from main. So I'm going to do create new branch and the new branch is created. Now it shows up here as this new branch. I'm going to copy the name. Now I'm going to go my terminal and my local. So I'm going to do, first of all, I'm going to do git pull. So, so when you do a git pull, this is another command, git pull is going to pull everything that happened, all the differences, all the changes that happened in the remote. Again, you're always talking about local and remote. Everything I'm doing here is local. Everything that's out there is remote. So when I do a git pull, it's going to pull whatever changes, whatever happened there is going to pull it. Okay. 
I just created a new branch and my local have no idea about that branch. So I'm going to do a pool. I do git pool. It will, it will list out all the new things that happened. In this case, it's telling me, hey, there is a new branch that got created. Okay. So we did git checkout. We did git branch just to see what branch we're on. And we did git pool. Now we're going to do git checkout, right? We did git clone. I mean, did I, did I say git checkout? We did clone branch pool. We looked at those so far, those three commands. Now we want to switch on the branch. When you're working on code locally, when you work, when you're making changes, you don't want to make changes to the code that's on the main branch. You want to make changes to some other branch that you created. Then after that, you're going to merge it into main. Okay. That's, that's the whole process. That's when you merge it into main, the UI will clearly show you what the difference are. Here is a code in main. Here is a code you wrote. And this is what, these are the changes you're making. That way we're going, you're going to be able to see exactly what's going to happen and you can approve it and you can merge it. That's really the whole point. Somebody else can make the same changes and there's conflicts and things like that. We'll talk about that, but that's the whole point. When somebody makes a change before you put it into main, you want to clearly see what are the changes. So that's, that's really what we're going to end up doing eventually. So when you make a change, you have to be on a specific branch. So now we're going to check out that branch, git check out another command, right? Git check out the new branch we got. So we're going to copy that, paste it, hit enter. Branch is set to track this guy right now. We're tracking that branch. So if I do git branch, just like earlier, now we, we see two branches. My local is aware of these two branches. So there is a main and the branch I'm on and it puts a little star in front of the current branch you're on. So any changes I make right now, those changes will be on this particular branch. Okay. So in summary, what did we do? We cloned the repository. First, we created a new branch, a new repository, create a new repository, but assume there was a repository. So we cloned it. Then in, on the remote, we created a new branch and we did a git pull. And then we switch the branch to the new branch. Now we are on the new branch. So now we can make changes on the new branch. In this case, if I do ls, there's only a readme.md, right? So we can add new files. We can edit the readme if we want to, but I'm going to show you by usually you would add a file or edit. Well, you always, you also edit an existing file. So we can do both. We can add a new file. You can also edit this file. So we saw this commands. Now let's go to the next video because I don't want to make this video huge. Uh, I want, cause this is like a course, right? So I want to break it up into multiple videos, easy to follow, easy to understand, but make sure you do those steps. If you don't do them, if you're just watching me, it's not going to make a lot of sense to you. So you have to do it. You have to actually, actually get your hands dirty and go through this uh, commands. So let's go to the next video and actually make changes and commit those changes. Okay.